Alex Massiali. Also fences foil, 20th in the world. Unfortunately, did not make the team. Very strong women's foil team. And he will take on Daniel Garozzo. 24-year-old Italian from Catania, Sicily. And it uh, seems like uh, Darth Vader might be in the audience. <laughs> what other music would you have for a gold medal match? Presser there, looking on. They test, uh, everything looks like it's in working order. And we are very soon to be underway. So, on guard. The referee for this match is uh, Florian, Florian Jorge of Romania. So Alexandra Massialis from the USA on the left of your screen against Daniela Garozzo of Italy. It's the world number one against the world number 11. Massialis 22 years old, Garozzo 24, but Massialis has the, is the more experienced fencer, competed in London 2012. He was very young when he competed there. He's won a silver medal at the World Championships uh, in Moscow last year. Garozzo won a team medal for Italy at that same championships in foil. Garozzo gets first blood. These two have met three times in uh, this Olympic cycle. Uh, first back at the Havana Grand Prix in 2013, Masialis winning 15-8. Then they met at the uh, Tokyo World Cup in 2015, Masialis wins 15-9. And more recently, they met at the Shanghai Grand Prix back in June, and Masialis won 15-13. So 3-0 in the head-to-heads to the American, but Garozzo's been getting closer and closer. That's one to the American. So the attack was parried, the riposte was no, you see it going past there. Masialis' turn and lands it under the non-sword arm of the Italian. This is a great little matchup. Very unorthodox, crouched over position from the American on your left and a more classic style from the Italian on your right. Very upright, but his blade stays well out of the way when he's in the attack. And, uh, there's no stop from Massialis, uh, so he keeps the right of way. A little, little skip in, but he keeps the momentum going forwards, as you see, and then just finishes with a neat little, well, it's not even a step lunge, it's a step step, because he knows that Garozzo's coming in on the counter. So when both coloured lights are on, both fences have hit on target, it's up to the referee to establish who started the attack first, who had the right of way, if there is no blade contact, as there was in that case. And the uh, Italian coach, Andre Cipressa, asked for a video review there and it was denied. So they're down to one more video review. And early on in the match, that's quite a big call to get wrong. Yeah, absolutely, down to one. So they're now gonna have to be very, very careful about how they use their remaining uh, appeal. Massialis scoring off target there, so no, uh, no hit, but this time lands in attack. So, attack to the left, a hit and a point. You're also just taking away Massialis' mask clip that clips the electronics from the vest to the mast. Actually, the mask has all of the, the, uh, the system built into it. Garozzo close to sliding off the edge of the piste. Garozzo coming in with that sword arm raised high, keeping it out of the way. Doesn't want to have his blade engaged until he started his attack. 
And it worked well for him there. Again, compound attack there, fainting up into the high line, up here, and then sneaking downstairs underneath the arm of Masiales. Big leap in the air from Masiales there just before that final attack landed. You can see Masiales trying to find his blade, but his blade was not coming. It wasn't coming, and then came through and hit on target. So that was Masiales' attack. And it's 4-2. Well, that long looked like it also came from the left. Yeah, no. Doesn't come up, the first one. So he's given it to the Italian. Still the attack from uh, Garozzo. He saw Masiales stepped in and tried to twist his body away. That was a clear sign. It's a counter attack. He's trying to avoid the attack hitting him, landing with a counter. But he just got caught on his back arm, and Garozzo hits off target, which gets him reset. Well, he's given that one to Garozzo, and Masiales has called for a video review. I can kind of see why he's called for that, but you have to say the first action from the American looks like he stops and Garozzo picks up the right way, sits there and sort of waves the sword around. That's not an attack for me. I think he's maintained his decision, so they're both so, down yeah. to one a video appeal now. Four apiece. First to 15. And now Garozzo, just edging slightly ahead. Oh. Continuation there from Garozzo going through off target, but Masiales is lethal in those positions, but he seemed to be a little bit sort of running scared there, made the parry, but just skipped away. Knows this isn't a foregone conclusion. The American, he may be world number one and probably the favourite for this tournament. But Garozzo's been fencing brilliantly all day. He looks so cool, calm and collected. Look at that classic on guard. Oh, that one light on. Italian. That's got to be Garozzo's. Six four. Well, Masialis. He had a bit of a scare. He certainly did against the other Italian. Yeah able to fight back. I think he was 14-8 down and fought back against Avila. Yep, so he knows his way around an Italian fencer and one with a massive lead. This is only a small lead, 6-4 Garozzo leads, but he is looking supremely strong that and he gets a hit round the back of the head. Yes. <laughs> it's like a behind-your-back shot in tennis. A circus move. Well, the gap the distance had closed so, closed so much, he needed to reach around and score the hit. You don't stop fencing until the referee calls halt, and that is when the hit was scored. Yeah, not only did he score around the back of his head, but he missed the first one and had to readjust <laughs> and poke it back in there. Garozzo looking very strong. Masialis needs to wake up. I think he needs to land a couple of his attacks to get his confidence back. See how his body is edged forward so much. Masialis. He's looking for that counter oh. or the stop hit, and he got it that time. Carrozzo is definitely winning on the attack, but he, if he takes too long, then Masialis is bound to dive in there. So this time, Masialis dives in and then goes forward to get out of trouble. It's not his turn, it leaps in. And Garozzo misses. So one light on the box can only go one way. And he's closed the gap to 5 4. And that one makes it 5 6 7 6. Yeah, he comes out of the blocks fast there, Daniele Garozzo. But Masiales started first as far as Florin Jorge, the referee, was concerned. And it's his decision that counts. Now, has Garozzo called for a video review? Because if he has, I think he may be down to zero on his video appeals because I can't see Florin Jorge changing this one.
He's given it to Masialis. Seven apiece. Oh. He needs to get that attack and he needs to build it up. But if he starts from too far out, too fast, Garozzo's going to do a Masialis on Masialis and step in and close with a counter attack. And so Masialis knows that he's got to start the attack from that distance, but he needs to start it slower. At the moment, uh, all the omens are with uh, the Italian. So Masialis with some tactical work to do. Needs to maybe change what he's his game plan. Change what he's planned to do in this fight. So when it comes down to an Olympic final, world ranking goes out of the window. What it comes down to is who has the metal, who has the nerve. And Masialis has brought the scores level. His father, Greg, looking on. Garozzo not happy with that. He found the blade, but there were two clear meetings of the blade. Masialis did what we call a change beat. He, as soon as Garozzo met the blade, you'll see it here. Well, actually, looking at that, it looks like Garozzo's made the second beat. Definitely two clear meetings of the blade. And... Uh, Maybe Chapressa has got uh, has got a he's got a point. He's got a point about this one, and uh, is Garozzo going to get the point? Well, this would be a big call if the referee overturns this. It I'm trying to read the body language of the video referee. As the crowd get behind. Alexandra Masialis. It was a good call from uh, the and Italian. He's changed camp. it. He's yeah. changed it. There were indeed two beats, as I said, but the second one came from the Italian. So actively looking to beat the opponent's blade to gain the right of way. And he's given that to the Italian as well. And now Masialis, well, he's in a little bit of bother. Three points is nothing really, but any slip any more. What well, Garozzo's doing to uh, Masialis, what Masialis usually does to his opponents, he's not giving him any time to think. He's not giving him any breathing space. Whether he's allowing Masialis to attack him and then he's jumping in on it straight away, or he's pressing Masialis. Masialis has not got the time to think. He needs a reset and he needs a reset fast. So 11 to 7. The Italian leads over the world number one. Yeah, that's a perfect hit from Garozzo. Masialis, you can see, is leaning forward, searching for the blade. He's searching for the blade, but Garozzo's keeping it well out of the way. And Masialis thinks, well, I'll, I'll land an attack then. But if you watch, Garozzo's hand is coming forward all the time. Very clever stuff from the Italian. Going backwards, he hits with a pair of repost. Finds the blade from the Americans. The Americans change tactics. He's going out on the attack. Garozzo changes his tactics and lands with the defense. This is great fencing from this Italian. Garozzo needs to do some work on that blade, get that straightened. So remember, the target score is 15. The clock ticking down and sticking to the break. Still Masialis. threatening, still landing the attack. This is brilliant fencing. If you look at the footwork, it's classic, it's beautiful. It's how fencing is supposed to be if you take it from the book. But the hand movements from Daniele Garozzo are so unusual. The arm right back, still threatening though. Absolutely beautiful. Oh, now Masialis is in serious trouble. He came back from 14-8 in the match against uh, Giorgio Avila. But this is a big ask in the Olympic final to come back from seven 
points down. Garozzo just needs one point, and then it's all over. He's got the gold. Garozzo, no, they're off target. That is exceptionally close. Garozzo finds the right of way. He's able to stand there, and he's looking for the time. He's looking for the opening. Masialis didn't give it to him, though. Well, can we get to a break? Is this going to make a break? No, they've got 10 seconds left of fencing. Garozzo wants this over. Pressing, pressing, pressing. Goes for oh, it, and Masialis counter. counters. Finally, the counter attacks worked for Masialis, and we will go to the break. And uh, Masialis is going to get a telling off from his dad, I think, uh, in this uh, break. He's got a lot of work to do to get back into the gold medal match. So less than a second on the clock, 0.94. Uh, <laughs> no, they're not going to go for that. And we go into the first of these breaks with Daniela Garozzo in a commanding position. The world number one, Masialis. Well, he did it against another Italian in the quarterfinals, Giorgio Avola. But I can't, I can't see him doing it again. It's too much to ask, surely. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I think right now, look, there's a, a bit of ranting going on between uh, Greg and his son there, Alex Masiales. They still will believe that they can do this, but I just feel from the way that Garozzo is fencing, the confidence that he has is so high. He's kept his composure. Avila kind of lost his way a little bit in the fight, even when he was 14, eight up, almost scared to go over the line and win. I don't see that in Daniele Garozzo. I mean, I think he could afford to ship two or three hits early doors in this period, and he'll still take the title. But let's see, they're coming back to the lines. So here we go. It all comes down to this for the Olympic gold medal. Daniela Garozzo of Italy just needs one more point. Alexandra Massialis on the left of your screen. Usually Massialis, uh, or Massialis is attacking, but Garozzo, well, did he score that? Long no, line. no, it's gone, it's gone, uh, it's the off target for Massialis. Look at Garozzo, in some ways he's being a bit mischievous, he's, he's now showing his blade uh, to Massialis. He's changed tactics again, but it's not worked for him because Massialis has clawed one back. Yeah, but I think this is a deliberate change of tactics from Garozzo. He knows that Masialis is going to change, so he's changed as well. N not so sure about uh, why Garozzo would uh, appeal for that one. That definitely looked like Masialis' attack. Garozzo a bit slow off the mark. So Masialis attacking there. Garozzo, well, he started clearly after. No one, they didn't engage their blades. Both fights came on. It was Masialis' attack. Now he's only four points behind, but Garozzo just needs one. If I was Alex Masialis, I would not want to be in a close quarters battle at this stage with Daniele Garozzo. Just too risky. Well, he needs to risk now, though, doesn't he? Needs to come back at it. Garozzo keeps whipping his mask off to try and celebrate. Yeah, trying to sway the referee's decision. They both do the same thing there, so that's simultaneous. No one clearly established the right of way. So they reset where they were. Garozzo just needs one point to take it to 15. Masialis gets one. It's another one back. Could this be an another amazing comeback? It will be an amazing comeback, but what you've seen here is Masialis has closed the distance by a step. That leaves less room for the Italian to finish his attack and gives more room for Masialis to go for the counter. But that that's, is, is a beat attack for Daniele Garozzo. And Garozzo takes off around this Olympic venue. And Garozzo has done it. He is the gold medalist. He needs to get back onto the piece. The referee hasn't signaled it yet. What a win for Daniele Garozzo. He will signal it right now. Brilliant fencing from the Italian.
And there we go. Confirmation by the referee. Daniela Garozzo of Italy is the new Olympic foil champion. So they shake hands and Daniela Garozzo takes the gold. Alexandra Massialis, world ranked number one coming into this, will have to settle for silver. And Italy have added to their amazing medal tally in this sport. They have 122 medals in total and they've just added one more, one more.